Uh, a lot of stories percolating, obviously uh, none bigger than what's going on with Gary Bettman and the meetings. Uh, Joel Quenville earlier today, and now we're hearing Kevin Shovel day off has been moved up. Smart move. It sounds like they might be related, so you might want to put them closer if you're going to come to any sort of decision. I think originally they said Monday for Kevin Shovel day yeah. off, and no, sense of urgency, show everybody uh, how important this is to move the process and uh, the right thing to do right now. The, the right thing to do last night, I think, and I don't know, I won't speak for you, but Joel Quenville probably shouldn't have coached last night. No, I, I was shocked. Yeah. I was absolutely shocked that, that he would be in a scenario where uh, you would not have had him off the bench. And it's not for any other reason, but just to calm the waters down a little yeah. bit and, and to, to show everybody that there is a sense of urgency to get more answers, which we hope that Gary Bettman and, and Joel Quenville probably with at least a couple of lawyers present now yeah. in the NHL head office would would start the process. But being behind the bench, uh, it made no sense to me yeah. last night. And I would probably guess that he would be maybe suspended indefinitely in the next 24, 48 hours oh, yeah. because there still needs a lot of uh, uh, questions answered here, yeah. Tim. And I look at that that report. When it's all said and done, here we have one of the worst things to happen, you know, to any or organization in NHL history. And all we have is a a report that was based on the same team that's being investigated. Right. Come on, like ultimate conflict of interest that's all we have right now is that report that was paid by the Chicago Blackhawks can somebody start answer, asking some other questions away from the team that was investigated yeah it's and maybe it starts today in Gary Bettman's office we'll see I wonder do you think first off I saw Joel Quenville's press conference yesterday before the game the pregame and I thought wow this is not the right like you should just go out there and say we respect this process a ton uh, I am going to step back until I meet with Gary Bettman and then we'll decide what the right thing to do is moving forward and then I saw Kyle Beach speak and I thought to myself okay now it seems to me like we need other people like there are contradictory reports coming from what Kyle Beach is saying versus what you saw in the report versus the different people in the room in that report like it feels like you yeah. need another independent investigation I, I agree that 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 interviews more people uh, we saw a lot of detail in there and then yeah. we saw not a lot of detail and I go back to I think the May 23rd where uh, the the five executives including Joel Quenville are in the office not a lot of detail there no. a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, no recollection right. or uh, you know everybody's got uh, different versions and nobody really knows in that meeting based on that report released by the Chicago Blackhawks what was said exactly and who knew what right and to this day we got the impression out of Joel Quenville that hey I may be guilty of turning the other cheek but I, I didn't know and I'm sure today in that office Joel Quenville saying I didn't know right and if that's the case is that enough for Gary to say you no longer can coach in the National Hockey League I'm not sure that's for people smarter than me to decide but I don't I didn't get that out of the report that uh, you know he, all I'm saying is if you're going to kick Joel Quenville out of the league you better be right for the reasons why right can they I, I know that um, there were Florida Panthers staff involved uh, I think the GM, Bill Zito, was yes. there. Yes, um, he spoke. And, and president of the team was there as well. Like, obviously, there are, you know, like, can the NHL step in and ban a coach? Can they fire a I coach? I think they can, can try. Yeah. I, I think they can try. But then where, uh, you know, where's Joel Quenville on this? And where is, will he, will he, be, will he, resign will right. he step aside or will he say no I don't think this is right I'm telling you I didn't know to what degree this situation was right am I guilty of being overly focused on trying to win a Stanley Cup 
Uh, was I told vaguely what was going on? And was I told, we'll handle it. Go win your Stanley Cup. Right. Don't focus on it. And uh, we'll take it from here. But we don't know. We don't know. Yeah. And that's why they need someone else to, to go further than what that 107-page report. And I... Listen, I, I spent some time and I read it, and the conclusions are tough to come by. And then when you hear Kyle Beach speak, he said there's absolutely no way Joel Quenville yeah. didn't know. So, so let's, so so, let's so, put so, them together, figure it out properly, and come yeah. to some sort of conclusion. I, I don't know, and I don't know that, But I don't know that the NHL can do that this quickly. I don't think that they can either. And I, if you have one story and another story and nobody to either uh, back up anyone's story w where are you left Tim right. where are you left but here's here's the problem and listen a lot of people use the word transparency and then when it comes to, like the NHL keeps talking about how inclusive it wants to be and and how they want to have open doors for everyone and then they do though they it, do they want to but then when it comes to practicing it you have to have some sort of transparency and you have to show people that it's not just words, right? That when something like this happens, we will act. Yeah. And what we saw here in 2010 was every system that they had in place, including the NHLPA, failing. And I, I really worry that the NHL is going to look at this and instead of saying just we were wrong and we're going to do better, they're going to be a little bit embarrassed and try and, and, and spin their way out of this. And that's the worry that yeah. I have. And I'm not talking about Joel Quenville. I'm not talking about his career. I'm not talking about his future or how long he sits or what accountability looks like. And I think that's what you and I are talking about, what accountability in this situation yeah. looks like. Well, there's but, but stop spinning and just say, man, this was a colossal mistake and we're going to be better moving Yeah, forward. there has been a sense over the years that there has been somewhat of a secret squirrel thing going right. in the National Hockey League. And even if you watch how this whole uh, sequence progressed, and, you know, if you're going to do a report, Chicago, let's go back a little further to where when it was first presented to you, and you said this is baseless and it had no merit. Right. How about a little thing? How about that mentioned? We're, in, oh no, no, we, we yeah. don't. We don't put that in there. Yeah. Okay. Why? Like go back at the very beginning, but they won't do that because they get to pick and choose what they want in the report and what they don't want in the report. They're paying for it for God's sakes. Right. So uh, the, that to me and and Stan continually throughout the summer, general manager of the Chicago Blackhawks. You can't read the tea leaves. By then, you would have had so much of evidence, and you still let him go and be your general manager? And don't even get me started on USA Hockey, who right. did the same thing. It's like, what is going on here? Like, how can you not know where this thing's headed? And yet, what? You think that there's going to be some magic carpet that you're going to be able to sweep it all underneath in the last second? Right. It's... I cannot believe what I saw in the last few months. And the, the, the thing that I keep going back to, and I, I saw Sheldon Kennedy um, on with Carolyn Cameron, and it, it's, it's opportunities in, this, in these mistakes. There are opportunities within these colossal failures that let people down, like Kyle Beach, who never got to chase his dream, never played. He was an 11th overall pick, never played a game in the NHL. Tim, and, and he, he name me first round picks where it doesn't pan out and they don't get another chance to go somewhere else. Yeah. Like he didn't even get there was not even another organization to give him a try. It was yeah. like it's it's crazy when you look back on this. Yeah, and, and that's the part where um, you know the NHL needs to take this and just build on it, right? Like something bad happened, take it and build on it. Don't let it be something that just gets swept under the carpet because that's that's when the mistake multiplies.